Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking once again about the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now for those of you who don't follow this channel regularly, this is a follow-up video to the review I did on the Nintendo Switch Lite about one month after it came out. So for any of you who haven't checked out that original video, I recommend you check it out right above. But if not, you're still going to be getting a lot of good information about the Nintendo Switch Lite in this video. And we're going to be focusing on if anything has changed six months into its lifespan. Now, there are three main reasons that I'm doing this video today. The first reason I'm doing this video is to answer the two most reoccurring questions I got on my original review of this console. The second is to look at the Nintendo Switch Lite in the current environment we're living in with everything that's happening out there and the prices on the original Switch skyrocketing. Is the Nintendo Switch Lite maybe an out for a lot of you out there? And lastly, I want to look at what the strong points were for the Nintendo Switch Lite when I reviewed it one month after its release and see if they're still true today. And also if some of the downsides of the Nintendo Switch Lite have maybe been resolved today, six months once again into its lifespan. Now, not to throw out too many spoilers, but there are a few things that have changed about the Nintendo Switch Lite and some that haven't. So stay tuned and we're going to look at all that together. And one last thing before we get started, don't forget to like this video if you appreciate the information, subscribe if you aren't already, and any questions or comments that you have, please leave them down below. As you see, I do follow-up videos, so if we have a lot of reoccurring questions that I once again don't answer in this video, we'll do a part three. So you know what? Let's get started with the huge elephant in the room. Let's talk about drifting issues on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now I think the best place to start is to first establish what drifting is. So for any of you who have heard the term out there but isn't too sure what people are talking about, it's basically when, due to wear, your thumbsticks start to register inputs even when you're not actually using them. So for example, often on the right thumbstick, it'll be for example when you have camera control, the camera rotating without you wanting it to, when it's on the left a thumbstick it'll be more like a registered input where your character is actually moving when you don't want it to move or moving in a diagonal fashion when you're actually trying to move it straight and whatnot and for total disclosure on my switch light my original switch i personally have had no drifting issues yet but that in no way means that they don't exist but one important point to note is that Drift isn't something that only exists in the Nintendo Switch family of products. Drift issues have existed ever since thumbsticks were invented, and they've existed in the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, the PlayStation family of products, and the Xbox family of products. However, where there's an issue is that it seems to be more current in the Switch family of products than it is in those other family of products. But I just want to throw out there that it's not like Drift was invented with the Nintendo Switch. And also I think the last misconception that some people have is that if you buy a product, open it up, and right away you have a problem with your thumbsticks, that isn't Drift. That's just a faulty product. Every electronic product has DOAs, meaning that Drift issues is really specific to when your thumbsticks degrade over time. Any product you buy, whether it be, like I said, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, uh, whether it be a cell phone, anything, you will have a certain percentage of products that right out of the box have a fault. So now that we know what drifting is, and we've sort of set aside, I think, a few of the misconceptions, let's talk about it in regards to the Nintendo Switch Lite. So as we were saying, basically, drift has existed in all products. Now, I think what the biggest fear of people is, is that when drift happened in a controller, whether it was your N64 controller back in the day, which I think is the most notorious controller for joystick problems, or whether it happened on a PlayStation controller, what always set people at ease is that you could check out the controller, buy another one, buy a third party controller, and you could just keep on gaming. The difference with the Switch family of products, and more specifically even the Switch Lite, is that the joysticks are built into the console. Meaning that if those joysticks stop working, you, you can't chuck out a part of your console and get another one back. And I understand that fear for a lot of people. 
Now, I'm maybe not the best test subject to figure out whether a Nintendo Switch Lite drifts on a regular basis. The reason why is because I mainly play my Nintendo Switch Lite with the help of different accessories. For example, this clip that basically I put my Switch Lite in and I can use my Pro Controller. Or I'll play it often in dock mode with a charger and a wireless controller or even a wired USB controller with my multi-port. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I think it's an issue that will mostly face people that will be using their Nintendo Switch Lite either with just basically normal fashion handheld or might be using things like a Nintendo Switch Grip. Basically because you'll be putting more mileage on those thumbsticks than someone who pl plays with the help of a controller. But talking about all this is basically the point I'm trying to make is that your Nintendo Switch Lite might start to drift one day. And the, in, the important word there is might start to drift. Because a lot of people that are asking me questions out there are asking me like, how long do I have before my Switch drifts? Oh, what am I gonna do when my Switch drifts? It could happen, but it also might never happen to you. However, I'm not saying disregard it, be ready for it, but you do have alternatives. So if your Switch Lite does start drifting, and there are some cases out there, basically there are issues with the Switch Lite and it might drift just as any device with a thumbstick might drift. But if it does come to drifting, I think there are two major outs that you have. The first major out is that in North America at least, Nintendo seems to be replacing all drifting switches and Switch Lights pretty readily. And they seem to be doing it even when you're out of warranty. So you know what? You might have to send your Nintendo Switch Lite away and be without it for a few weeks. But you know what? When the Xbox 360 released and they started overheating right, left and center, people had to live without them for a couple of months as well. But there are other options out there. And you know what? If the worst happens and you just want to buy a USB adapter for 10 bucks on Amazon and a $15 controller, you can play in tabletop mode just fine with your Switch Lite. But I get it that that's not the main reason of having a Switch Lite for a lot of people out there. They don't want to have to drag around a controller and a USB adapter. And that other option is self-repair. Now, I'll be honest, it's maybe not for everyone, and a lot of people are going to be scared to do it. And like I said, if it's under warranty, I would even recommend you send it away and be without it for a few weeks and risk making it worse and then really not having any you know replacement under warranty available to you but if you do choose to repair it yourself just know that a thumbstick on amazon is something like 10 bucks and the process of changing it especially if it's the left one is actually pretty simple i'll be honest with you the right one is a lot more difficult on the switch light but if you want to see that process, Spawnwave has made an excellent video on that and honestly, a better video than I could currently make. So I would recommend you check out on his channel the Nintendo Switch Lite thumbstick replacement if you are in the situation of a drifting light. But basically all this is saying that I don't think that just the fear that your Switch Lite might drift one day should be a valid point for just not buying the console altogether. Almost every electronic product out there has a fault or a weakness in some area. This might be the Switch Lights, and but I don't think it's a deal killer. Now, I know that might not answer all your questions that you have about Drift and the Nintendo Switch Lite, but that is my point of view on the matter and my stance. So now we come to the second most common question I got on my first video. And I think this is one, unfortunately, of my own making. And that is, why do you say that the Nintendo Switch Lite does not have full motion control? It has a gyro sensor and you can use motion controls. And like I said, I think this one is of my own making and it's unfortunately a victim of the cutting room. The reason why, if you guys don't know, but when I make a 20 minute video, I have probably over an hour to an hour and a half of footage. So unfortunately, some things I have to abridge and some things get cut out. And in this case, I think I cut out a little bit too much information on what exactly I was trying to communicate. So first of all, yes, the Switch Lite does have a gyro sensor and will work with games where motion controls are optional. But what I actually said in the video is that they do not work with games where motion control is required. 
So today we're going to correct that and we're going to go a little bit more into details of what I was trying to communicate. Right here on the left, you have Mario Kart. Now Mario Kart is a game that will work fine with your Nintendo Switch Lite. And yes, you can use the gyro sensor to basically move your cart during the game. And the reason why this works is because this is simple motion control and it doesn't require full motion control. Now, on the right here, I have Just Dance 2019. Now this is a game that requires full motion controls. What I could have said that maybe would have been clearer is that they require an actual Joy-Con. And if you want to play this game, you're going to have to actually get yourself a Joy-Con or they're compatible with an app with your phone. But this is specific to Just Dance. Not all games will give you the option to use your phone as a controller. And just to bring the point home, let's put one last game up there. Ring Fit Adventure. I would like to see someone try to play Ring Fit Adventure on a Switch Lite without Joy-Cons. Just doesn't work. And that's what I was trying to communicate, is that games that require full motion control in the format of a Joy-Con will obviously not be compatible with the Nintendo Switch Lite. But there is a gyro sensor for games that use optional motion controls, and yes, they are compatible with the Nintendo Switch Lite. So there was no intention about being misleading. I just said what the console did not do. It was not compatible with full motion control, but I should have maybe explained a little bit more about what I meant by that. And I had a section that was explaining it, but like I said, it fell victim to the cutting room. But one last quick little point before we move on. Just because there is a gyro sensor does not mean that it's always a good idea to use it. Me personally, cannot play Mario Kart with the gyro sensor. Because don't forget, your screen is the Nintendo Switch Lite. Meaning that when you're tilting it, you're tilting the screen. And honestly, after one or two races, I almost get motion sickness just from trying to play with the gyro controls on the Nintendo Switch Lite. So now I think that those two major questions are answered. But if any of you have any other questions, don't forget, like I said, to leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to them as fast as possible. So now let's move on to the next part of this video, which is talking about the Switch Lite in the current environment with everything that's happening out there. And by the way, I just wanted to say a quick message that I hope all of you out there are staying safe and doing well. And you know, for all of you that are really following the guidelines and staying home and keeping that social distancing, thank you so much. But, you know, let's move on to more pleasant things. Well, pleasant, but not so pleasant. Because unfortunately, right now, if you're trying to buy a Nintendo Switch, the original model, you're going to be getting price gouged. Because unfortunately, they're in short offer. A lot of people have bought a lot of them up and are basically reselling them at double to almost triple the price. And I think that that's where this little guy comes to the rescue. Because although the original Switch in a lot of parts of the world are sold out, the Switch Lite is still at least more available than the traditional Switch. And even if the price is a little bit higher than usual, it's still at a reasonable level. And as I said in my first video, if you're going to be a person that is going to mainly play in handheld mode or in tabletop mode, the Nintendo Switch Lite is an awesome option. But you do have to remember that it is completely impossible currently to dock the Nintendo Switch Lite and it's probably never going to be possible because the actual hardware to make it dockable is not in the unit. So if you can deal with that and you can live without the games that require Joy-Cons or accept the fact that you're eventually going to have to buy Joy-Cons to play those games, well you know what? I think the Nintendo Switch Lite right now is a better buy than it ever was just because you can pay up to almost $700 for original Switch, but you're maybe going to pay about $250 for a Nintendo Switch Lite in most parts of the world. And even in some areas, they're available at the regular MSRP, which is about $200 US. But there's also a second point that this world crisis sort of brought on. Everyone is in the house. And if you're like me and you have a multi-kid house, you know that not 
everyone at every point in time is going to agree on what game they want to play. And when you're in the house 24-7 for now almost three weeks, I'll admit that you really, really, really need to have something to keep them occupied. And in regular circumstances, having one switch per household, a lot of people could get by with it. But I think right now, a lot, a lot of people are going to appreciate having a second or third switch in the house and not having to pay the full price. Even if we're talking about MSRP, I have four kids, by the way, and if I wanted to buy them each an original switch, we would be talking about $1,200 US. However, if I buy an original unit for the household and one person can use that one, and I buy three extra switch lights for the other three kids, that's actually only amounting up to $900. You're basically saving $300. You're saving a whole switch by buying three switch lights. And you know what? I'd rather they play around with this, which is one complete piece and is, I feel, more solid in a young kid's hands than the original switch where honestly I've seen rails being torn off of the Joy-Cons and whatnot. But owning multiple switches does have a serious downside and we're gonna get to that at the end of the video in the you know downsides of the switch that are maybe still true. So if you were planning on tuning out, I would recommend you at least watch the end of the video so you can get that, that downside out of the way. You know, I wouldn't want you running out buying three switches and being unaware of that or at least Quick hint, buy games physically whenever possible. However, before we move on to that last section, there is one other little thing that I would want to talk about at the about the current environment and the Switch Lite. I don't know if any of you out there know, but there's this little game called Animal Crossing that came out. Maybe you've heard about it. Well, what's really interesting is that Animal Crossing limits you to one island per console. Meaning that, once again, in a situation like mine, where you have multiple kids, having one Switch with one copy of Animal Crossing can be quite an issue. However, if you manage to be disciplined and work out a schedule, you actually could get away with only one physical copy of Animal Crossing and multiple Switches with multiple islands for multiple people. Now that point is just as true with the original Switch. It's just like I said, I think it's much easier to save that extra hundred bucks and put a Switch Lite in the hands of one of your kids than it is to pay the full price for an original Switch. Now for the last part of the video, I said there were a few strong points I wanted to come back on on the Switch and also maybe one major default that we already sort of brushed up on a little bit that I want to go over again. Now the major strong points of the Switch Lite that I said in my first video was that I found that number one, the price was very attractive, especially for someone that isn't going to be playing in dock mode and that they already know that that's their reality. Number two, the Switch Lite's form factor makes it feel sturdier in your hands and actually when you're playing in handheld mode, the Nintendo Switch Lite just in itself feels a lot more comfortable than the original Switch. And lastly, having a shared library with the dedicated home console and portable console are all still major realities for the Nintendo Switch Lite and that hasn't changed. And my stance on them hasn't changed either. When I did my first video one month after starting to use the Nintendo Switch Lite, I said that I spent now more than 82% of my gaming time on the Nintendo Switch Lite, not on the original Switch. And you know what? Nothing has changed. The only time I use my original Switch is when I'm playing with other people or I need footage for my videos, so I'm using my capture card or whatnot. But if not, all my other gaming time is spent on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh, and I almost forgot, when I do my Ring Fit Adventure, OG Switch, I'm on you, buddy. So those were the major points why it's an awesome idea to buy a Nintendo Switch Lite. But there is still one major fault, and it's not exactly with the Nintendo Switch Lite, it's with having multiple Switches, which I think is a reality that the Nintendo Switch Lite was created for. And that is that if you buy your games digitally and you buy them on the same Nintendo account, unfortunately, you cannot play two games 
on two switches that are linked to the same online Nintendo account at the same time. And this point was misunderstood by some in my first video because I, I get frequent comments about this as well. I'm not saying that I want to play Mario Kart on my Switch Lite at the same time as I'm trying to play it on my original Switch. I agree with you guys, that shouldn't work. You bought one license, you should be able to play the game only on one console at a time. I'm talking about you cannot play two different games that you purchased on two different consoles at the same time. You basically have to dedicate one console as your main console and the secondary console basically gets shut off whenever you start up any purchased software on your main console. This is not true, however, for physical games. So let's give a real world example. I have one copy of Mario Kart. I have one copy of Smash Brothers. If I bought them both digitally linked to the same Nintendo account, I cannot play Mario Kart on my Switch Lite at the same time as I'm playing Smash Brothers on my other Switch, whether it be a Switch Lite or an original Switch. However, if you bought the games physically, this isn't an issue. If I have a physical copy of Mario Kart and a physical copy of Smash Brothers, I can play both games on both consoles at the same time, no problems had. Now I know some of you out there are going to say, well just buy the games on different Nintendo accounts. Yes, but people shouldn't have to do that. And not only that, if ever the two games you want to play on the two Switches happen to be on the same Nintendo account, you're back to square one. And back when the Switch Lite was released, Nintendo actually did a press release saying that they were going to try and address this issue in the coming future. However, here we are six months later and it's still the same issue. Nothing has been addressed. Now there is a quick way around this, but it's far from perfect. And if you want to know what it is, I'll try and break it down really quickly. But whichever console you designate, designate as your main console actually does not have to be connected to the internet to play a digital game. Only the consoles that are designated as secondary consoles have to be connected to the internet to be able to play online software. By the way, this trick only works with two switches. More than two switches, this doesn't work anymore. But basically, the trick is that you take your main console offline when you start the software and then you can go play the secondary software online on your secondary console. Since the main console is offline, the cloud can't see that you're actually playing a digital software on your main console. What that means is it doesn't shut off your software on your secondary console. But just be careful, this doesn't work the other way a lot around because the secondary console, like I said, to be able to start software has to be connected to the internet. So that's why I said this trick isn't perfect. The main console has to be the one playing the game offline. The secondary console can play, it has to be playing a game connected to the internet. But so far, this is the only way around this other than buying physical. By the way, over 95% of my collection is physical for this one and only issue. Well, that and the fact that I have a collecting addiction. But that I would say on my whole view of the Nintendo Switch Lite is my biggest disappointment so far. And it's even more disappointing that it was an issue that Nintendo knew about at the beginning, said they were gonna do something and just never did. But anyway, like I said, to me, it still doesn't end up being a deal breaker just by physical and you'll be fine. So I think that just about does it for my six month follow-up Nintendo Switch Lite video. And I think the conclusion in my opinion is that the Nintendo Switch Lite is an even better purchase than it was at the beginning. Mostly because like I said, of the unavailability of the original Switch or the price gouging that you're gonna have to go through to get one. But other than that, my basic opinion is Nintendo put out one heck of a good little console and like I said, if you're going to play in handheld mode mostly, like I do, because, you know, basically dad never gets the television, go out and buy yourself a Nintendo Switch Lite. You don't have to feel bad about it. So, as usual, I really hope you guys liked this video. Like I said, leave me any comments, questions down below. I try to answer as fast as possible. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe if you appreciated the video and you want to see more. Oh, and hit that bell notification button to be notified when I put out my videos. 
And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.